20 minutes in and I really didn't realise my mic was muted. So that's a great start. So anyway, let's crack on. Now that that faux pas done. <laughs> so. Oh, it looks like all those fantastic jokes I've made are now lost to the ether. Looking very good. These, on the other hand, I'm not a massive fan of. So let's. Add a spec more detail. These normals were the wrong way around, so let's replace those. Now I could move them manually, but then that would mess up my unwrapping. Interest of speed, I am going to try and get this done and maybe start the next model that I've got on my list. So now we need to find some stone. Big old stone slabs. Oh, we've got a candidate, candidate right here. Just load this into Photoshop and see what I can do with it. Let's create a new file. Width 1024. Always work in the power of twos, otherwise Train Sim doesn't like it. So. 
more this top row I'm interested in than anything else. Because these are neatly stacked. With this texture, I'm going to get it to wrap around the edge slightly. Oh, that's a bit too warped. Photoshop is truly magic. And I've been working with Photoshop for goodness knows how long. Let's make sure this mirrors properly. So, nice quick way that I like to do it is I just take half of the image because I already know it's seamless in the middle, and then match on the ends. And luckily, this is a brick texture, so it's quite easy to get seamless. some of these artifacts. Yeah, that should be fine. Save as. Just going to take these arches. Oh, a lot of noise outside. It's been quiet all day, so obviously things are going to kick up now. I started streaming. <laughs> Stone slab. It's because of the rough, rough streets of County Durham.
So I've always found archers the most difficult thing to do in generally modelling because it's, it's it's just a, it's it's always difficult to get it right. Tom, how's it going? Oh. Right. Oh, was it was was a shot bad then? Was it? Oh, not fun! Not fun whatsoever. Straighten out this curve. see how one looks before I spend time on the others. Ooh, that looks a bit a bit nasty. That's that's better. Eighteen ounce, uh, sixteen ounce steak. Oh, I can't even count that high. Clearly, oh no! I cooked me and my wife some lovely spag bowl. Went down a treat. So the first one turned out alright. I'm now going to do the same to the rest. It's really sinister and intense music. This isn't quite what I was looking for. Definitely not what I was looking for. Can't play that. Second, folks. There you go, some relaxing music.
Bless you, my love. <laughs> That's okay, you don't need to apologize. It's fine, everybody sneezes. half done, let's go to the other side These are very almost done. Oh, dogs are going crazy, as per usual, so...
let's just get these all planar. I'm going to be really lazy with these, so excuse me. Let's just do this. Some nice straight lines. I can't really assign a mess to polygons when they like that, but it's fine. I'm just doing this for the sake of speed. Same with these. the issue with common, uh, running commentary on this, it's not very interesting and it takes a lot of concentration. So I am sorry if I go quiet for pauses. in place. Alright. Let's 
looking good. Now, all that's really left is I've got an embankment to make and some girders and the top. Now, I saw the perfect girder texture the other day. Uh, when I was looking at rusted metal. But the question is, is that was five days ago and I can barely remember what I had for breakfast. So, plain rust maybe? No, it's definitely not here. Mixed rust, maybe. Uh, rusted paint. Let's go for just rust and see what comes up. Aha! Aha! Got it! This is the one I was looking for. So let's throw this into Photoshop. Doesn't really need any work. Already seamless. Let's just take it. Maybe the colours pop a little more. That's better. Let's call these rusted. Chevron. Now I find it's always easier to work in a multi material. Because it's just it's cleaner, it's it's neater. When other people look over your work, it's gonna really help them understand your thought processes behind what you're doing. It's 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 one of those things where I've, I look for a lot of people's work um, because I just change the work of a lot of third parties, and it's all whenever you come across an asset developer who does this to their work, it's it's just really nice when people use multi-materials uh, multi because it's just everything's laid out for you nice. Right, the rest of these are going to be just metal beams. Let's do this. Plenty and plenty of seam of seamless metal beam textures. I 
or just one apparently, but it's a good one. It's definitely a good one. I'm not tremendously interested in making my own right now, so this will do. No, I promise I will make some textures at some point. It's just right now. I want to get this model done before I dive into that section of 3D modeling. A lot of my textures I do make from scratch. This like orangey hue. That's not really going to make a difference because you're not actually going to see these very much. Oh, that was the wrong format. And there's a dead giveaway of that because you can actually see it. When you save it as ARGB, it tends not to be visible as a thumbnail because it's not a native image that Windows reads. But yeah, in case I was muted earlier, text tools is 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 my life saviour. It's 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 a tool I use all the time for work. I'd be lost without it. It's it's such a powerful bit of kit for just unwrapping stuff on the fly really quickly. You know, if you if you're not tremendously tremendously fussed in. don't mean to say aesthetics because that's going to be wrong. If you're not tremendously fussed with how like you're doing an area quickly and you want a texture on there but you don't really want to spend ages creating a massive texture that's just going to be a real pain to sort then text tools is for you. That's the beams done. I need a texture for the top, which, if I remember correctly, is a grassy, gravelly type kind of thing. Now, usually I would blend it. Uh, it's kind of tire tracks on one side. Uh, I would normally blend it with the ballast of a track, but I'm not sure what track. OTS are using, so I'll probably go for a dirt. The dirt. Which blends into a grass with some tire tracks. So, let's make a texture. Make it square for now. I might change that in a bit. So at first I want my dirt texture. That was a bit, a bit silly. I should have gone soil really. Patchy soil like that. That's a nice patchy soil. Nice 
see it's going to tile in some places because there are these big rocks which is just in the way so I'll get rid of those, get rid of that, uh, let's get rid of some of them, I don't need to get rid of all of them, just just the ones that are repeating badly, yeah it's a bit like that, it's going to tile a bit less, patch of grass, right, let's just remove that, yeah So now I need some grass. Let's see what kind of grassy texture I can find. Some good mossy grass. Let's see what that looks like next to this. Nope, that was the wrong texture. Yeah, I think that'll work. to just blend it slightly at the edge so that you can't see the scene anymore. Uh, my opacity is at 50, let's crank that up to 90. like it's layered. Now let's see if we can find some tire tracks. That's not how you spell track. Tire trick. <clears throat> That's interesting. Let's have a look at that. See what I can do with this. Fucking 
bicycle. Right, too much. Looks a bit too red. That's a bit better. see how that looks. So we call this one top. Save. Yeah, that looks like a pretty decent representation. The tiles are little, but I might fix that. So there's no real easy way of fixing a texture that tiles other than just getting rid of the parts that make a tile. So you've got to look for the bits that stand out and just get rid of them. And this, it's just these patches of brown grass. Oh, removed. I do love a good viaduct. It's always a shame when they tear them down because it's, it adds so much character to an environment. Because uh, up, up, up where I am, there are countless viaducts that have been ripped down around the Darlington area, which is just down the road to me. a lot less now. I 
Okay, now there's one thing I've got to do still, one thing I've got to model, which I didn't think of the other day, and that was an embankment. Just to make it easier for Tom or Mark, whoever's building a route, to put it down. This side. This is a weird bug that 3ds Max gets, which I've only encountered in 2019, because it's only 2019 that's like 2019 and others let you do this. Is when you isolate polys in your you in your UV editor, if you don't reselect all the verts before converting to poly, you lose the ability to select them in edit poly mode. which is a bit of an annoying bug, but it's a quick fix. And it's, it's my fault for being a lazy developer. Uh, I should really, really learn some better habits, but unfortunately, habits are habits for a reason. So, I'm just gonna drag this across. Very basic embankment. Smooth it off so it's not like a look quite so flat. I make these embankments taper slightly means that whoever's placing it will have a bit more freedom when it comes to placing the asset. So now I need a tarmac texture. Normally, if I was able to visit the area myself, I would take photo reference for all of these because I don't like relying entirely on textures because uh, textures.com because it is at the end of the day it is it is a website and loads of other people use it I want to I want to add the feel of the asset to the area you know I won't rely on photo textures either because 
that can look wrong in a lot of places. But if if you have the right mix of photo textures that you can edit, create seamless textures with, it looks so much nicer than just procedurally generated textures or just ones you found on the internet. I mean, goodness, whenever we go on research, when I am allowed to go on research, because normally I'm not allowed out, when I am allowed to go on research, um, I'll easily walk away with upward of a thousand photos. Oh, please do. I'd love to look at it. This is the gander. Oh, goodness, that's loud. Sorry. Oh, fascinating. Oh, it's always a shame seeing them take out these massive, massive bits of history, you know? Um. I mean, I understand you've got to make room for progress, but it's, 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 still, it's still a shame. Because at some point, some architect was built to make, uh, was, was hired to make it, and you know, it's just seeing my work get demolished at the end of the day. It's important not to go nuclear green because it will stand out like a sore thumb. But also not go too dead. That's a nice green. Let's see how this looks. Whereabouts in Huntington is that? Oh, I, I, I know where Huntington is. We uh, go down once a year normally because um, that's where the JC office is based. And uh, we all go down once a year to get a bit merry in the festive spirit. I mean, um, Tom will confirm that we all get a bit merry. Oh, really? Okay. I'll have to keep an eye out when I come down next, which if 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 we have another Christmas do down there. Uh if we're not all out of this lockdown by then. I mean primarily like all, most of us all work from home. 
Um, but it is nice to see everyone in face to face every so often. Oh my. I mean, it's definitely going to be helpful because, I mean, getting, getting through Huntington, like, ex especially at night was a was, was was always a bit of a nightmare. I mean when when we went down last it was um me, Tom and Mark all share the same car. Um oh we got lost towards the hotel twice, I believe. Oh yeah. It is it is a nice area. It is it is really nice, but it's 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 all a bit too I'm 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 too used to the North of England and the prices of the North of England. It was all a bit too dear down there. I mean, I I I grew up in the South, and um, in the New Forest, so I was, I was I was very used to the prices to the price of just things down there. Like uh, you know, you go to a pub, ten will buy you two drinks. It wasn't until I went up to visit Liverpool. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't until I went on a trip to Liverpool with my wife that, um, you know, I bought two drinks for us. Well, I, 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 yeah, I bought two drinks for us. Gave him a tenner. He gave me a fiver back, and I was like, "Surely you've messed up here, mate." <laughs> you know. Um. You know, it's 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 the north is a lot a lot a lot different in a lot of ways. Um, we've been up here two years now because we bought bought our first house up here. But we would wouldn't 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 turn back. We love it up here. Absolutely fantastic. So much so much better quality of life because everything's a lot cheaper. You know. It's a bit of a raggedy road. No, I don't like that. I mean, I've I've only been with a company for um, two and a half years now. No, yeah, about two and a half years. And uh, from from my understanding, we used to have a much bigger office in Huntington, um, in, in in the city centre. Uh, back when it was uh, Mastertronics. Um, back when we back when we used to do solid copies, not before we went all digital. Um, now now we've only got a small small space. You know, one 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 room office. Only two people sort of go in, and that's from a just flight team. Um, everyone at JT, we we we're, we're all home based, so makes for an interesting interesting dynamic you know back when I was a product designer I used to work in Portsmouth um, where you know worked in an office environment office environments are all good because you get to know the people you work with but there's always office politics and other things you've got to worry about oh yeah yeah I've, I've, I can't say I've ever been because um, I've joined the company way too late It's a 
bit too harsh of a seam, I'm going to make a special texture just to go in between these. JT are a fantastic company. I mean, it's 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 we're 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 very tiny now. I mean, we mostly on the development side. There's just me, Tom, and Mark, and um, a gentleman contractor who goes by the name Nitten. But. Uh, you know, we got we, we, we got other people. We we're, we're very close to our other side, just like. I mean, the irony is, before lockdown, we were all planning our next big day out together as a JT day out, which is what we had oh, just over a year ago now, uh, where we all went to Whitby uh, and had a, had a gander in the York Museum, uh, which was fantastic. Like, because I'm I'm not an enthusiast, but I'm 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 slowly getting there with the aid of Tom and Mark. Um, they are slowly corrupting me into the ways of an anorak. Seamus178, thank you for the follow. No, it's, it's to be honest with you, um, at some point I am going to do some videos on Blender, which is a, it's a free free software, because uh, unfortunately 3ds Max you got to pay for, and you got to pay quite a lot for 3ds Max. Um, and in my opinion, it's worth every penny, but, you know, I, I, I can understand from an, from an enthusiast point of view, sort of that kind of outgoing, I, th I think it's like, geez, it's like something silly for a private license, is like a... Uh, three grand a year I think but um, if you guys want me to go into more into depth into what I'm doing I'm more than happy to I mean at the moment it's just unwrapping has it been an hour and a half already goodness Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely go, like, um, after this I'm going to go, because this bridge is almost ready for its next step, which is a bit that I'm going to properly walk you guys through, because it's, it's, it's a bit that's taken me quite a, uh, a, a good six months to grasp before I was comfortable with it, and that's getting it in-game. Uh, no, it's not a root build, it's a, um, it's an asset build, so I'm building assets for... Um, OTS's next route, well, where an OTS route, uh, Manchester leads.
Oh, I hope it is interesting. That's what I'm aiming for. A bit bigger. Then I can match my tarmac texture to it. I mean, it's on the mark of a root builders. I don't. I I only know how to how to play stuff in game for testing purposes. I'm sure I'll I'm sure I'll have a crash course someday in how to build stuff, but for now I'm content with just making my models for them. I like to think of myself as a Lego, as as someone who makes Lego. So like, you get Lego kits. I supply the Lego pieces. You know, they're the guys who put it together. And that needs a rebake, but other than that, that's the first step of the modelling done. So let's quickly give this a rebake. So what I'm doing now is 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 it's what in the industry it's known as a bake, where I'm putting I'm I'm baking the shadows onto a material. So it can be later referenced by the game to give it more deeper shadows, because the in-game, real-time shadow engine is 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 isn't the best, but that's because it's it's an old piece of software. So this is all being done on the second UV channel. Sorry if the screen goes a bit funny, this takes a lot of CPU power to map it out properly. <laughs> and it might crash, it looks like it's going to crash. Oh, no, okay. Fantastic. So, I'm now going to bake this out. And, uh... So what this is doing is it's just pushing all of my items flat and then baking the shadows onto each of the faces. Just takes some considerable uh, CPU power because unfortunately it's scanline renderer so I can't use my GPU. So it has to be done on the processor. Uh, if this was a more modern engine, game engine, I would be able to use things like uh, NVIDIA GPU rendering and stuff like that, but because TrainSim is a bit more basic, I have to do it the old-fashioned way. But now, so basically, this is this is what it looks like after the shadows have been baked onto it, so you get a little bit of artificing, uh, artificing in the tunnels from where the shadows don't know what to do. Um, But something's messed up my my smoothing on these. So let's quickly fix that. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first step of modeling. You build it, you texture it. Now, getting it in game. Getting it in game has a few different quirks to it. So, first of all, we want to check how many tries it's got, and it's got 5,576. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and clone it, and we're going to give it what's called an LOD, which stands for a level of detail. Now, the way the game engine handles the game, it handles the assets. When you're a dis further distance away, it, lo it renders a higher LOD, which is going to be a much more basic version of the model. So what I do is I give it a new name, let's call it 2. Now the second number references how far away this part of the model is visible. So at the moment it's at 500 meters, I'll change that to 900. So 
So what, what I want to do is I want to try and decrease the amount of detail in this model by at least half. So I'm going to get rid of the original, make sure that's safe, and I'm just going to go hog while in removing geometry. So where are there all these extra lines and stuff, I want to get rid of that. But I want to do it in such a way that it doesn't, you're not going to notice it. Because like, like, like in the old days of PlayStation 2 games, you would have things pop into existence. I, I want to avoid that. Um, and it's to me, it's a good, it's it's a, it's a mark of a good developer if you can have something come into view seamlessly, yet be really well optimized in terms of engine capabilities. So uh, I'm going to start with getting rid of stuff that people won't see, because even if even if you get close, you won't. It will render in the the, the close like. Because this is kicking in at 900 meters away, I can get rid of so much detail, and the moment people get closer to look at it, the detail renders back in. So I can get rid of most of the detail on these things. that. Now the number I want to aim for is half of 3,924. So that's 1,972. 1,972 is what I want to aim for, which I've done. So that's going to be my first level of detail. And I'm going to clone it again. And this one's going to kick in at 1,200 meters. Uh, it's my third level of detail. And this one, I don't really care because people aren't going to see it very, well, people aren't going to see it close up. So I can just crunch the detail using a weld and then strip it of any smoothing that might have gone weird. Now, that, I would say, would be model done. Don't need more than three LODs for something like this. Get it changed every 600 meters. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our model and we are going to export it. as an IGS because that's the file that TrainSim reads and it's going to check over everything to make sure that it's all named properly. One thing I haven't done which I should have done is parented these so you don't have to do this but I find it improves improves performance slightly you're only really supposed to do this if you animate it, but I like to parent all of my LODs under its original LOD. So, export. Uh, 
now if I open up I don't know how well this is going to show if I open up this tool this is blueprint editor this is the main piece of kit you want to use for getting your stuff in game so scenery I've already made an XML for it look at that so I'll do that from scratch just so you guys can see it So you're going to create scenery blueprint, and from that you want to put the display name. This is what it's going to show up in game. Now because this is the OTS, it's going to be brackets OTS. Um, I believe that's it. Let me quickly check before I send this over to Mark and he gets upset with me because it doesn't follow his naming conventions. Yeah, okay. So it's brackets OTS and then it's Healy Mills Fireduct. So that's what it will appear like in game. So just for sakes. Don't need to do it in every language, I just like to do it in every language because that's how I was initially shown and it kind of ingrained in memory. So it's going to come under bridges, viaducts, and tunnels. Um, we're going to change the level detail generation range to 10. The reason we do this is so that if people are running on, say, a potato PC and they don't have their scenery density set to max, you can get missing assets, which has been a massive issue with a lot of routes that we've done with JT in where, because this, this is only a recent discovery, where if people don't have their scenery density turned to the max, Sometimes, if if the level generations range isn't set to ten, you'll just get missing assets. You'll get um, like missing viaducts, missing stations. I we we've had because I I noticed this when I when we were releasing the metline, I incorrectly set the generation range on Uxbridge. So when you were driving into Uxbridge, if you weren't driving in on maximum scenery detail, it wasn't there which was a massive issue because not everyone has a high-end PC, you know. When we're developing it, we all have it on max settings because we can. We, we, we have good enough PCs to do that, so we these sort of things slip the net. Um, that's all we really need to do for those. Now, if you press play, it will put it into a simulized, simulated gameplay, so it will be like it's in game, it'll put it in the engine, but not in the actual game itself. Not yet. This is just so you can check it before you put it in engine. Because once you put it in engine, the only way to get rid of it is to delete it from your assets folder. Because things like that can happen. So this has happened. This has happened because I've incorrectly set up my materials. They are all... They are all using UV channel 1 on their main slot, so I need to go through them all and change that. So, it needs to be UV channel 1, not UV channel 2. They're all using the wrong UVs, basically. all of them it's probably a quick way of doing this but I haven't figured it out oh 
Oh, that one almost slipped my net. Right, okay, so I can re export this now. And then check it in game again. That's better. So, this is what it's going to look like in game. Now, I'm I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks. exactly the kind of look I was going for. If I were to criticise it at all, I'd say these bricks are a bit too beige um, compared to the actual oh, no, compared to the actual bridge. I think they're a bit more yeah, they're a bit more saturated. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of the colour in those bricks with some Photoshop magic. So let's just Saturate it a little. Close that because that's causing me a bit of lag on my machine. Right now, I press the export button. Right, that's exported, and if I open up the game, quickly save this before my machine overheats and dies. Now, if I go build, let's go. Let's go on my test route. So, let's include my OTS stuff. Oh, no. OTS leads Manchester. Include assets. Now if we go to bridges and viaducts, it's right there. In game. And looking rather nice if I don't say so myself. So, oh, that's going to have to be fixed. That's okay. I can fix that. Ooh, there's a an edge under here which needs to be fixed. Is that on both sides, or is it just one? Just the one side. Okay. Let's fix that quickly. No, it's not going to be an issue in those. That's fine. Is that the open edge there? Let's have a look. Yes, it is. funky edge in here. Which I want to quickly address.
let's just close this cap here Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't go as far as make it look easy. It's, it, it was, it was very head scratching to get it, to figure it out. Um, because dovetail don't tend to document what they're doing, or how to do it. Now the only thing left to do is when you're happy with it is pack it so you can send it to people. So, oh no, not just trains. OTS. Force of habit. Assets. OTS. Leeds Manchester scenery. And then you select what you need. So I've got 10 textures from the well, it's more than 10, I think it's 11, because I've got a shadow map in there. Create package. Save this out to desktop, because I'm a terrible person. So we're going to call it Healy Mills. I can't type right now, apparently. Healy Mills Viaduct. And the date today, which is the 16th. 16th, 06, 2020, and then A. Just in case I have to do multiple ones. Save it, and that has now given me a RWP file, which can now be installed using the package manager. Uh, it's unprotected because it's it's going to mark. Let's post this on the OTS Discord. And that is my first asset for Leeds Manchester. Now, I've still got roughly half an hour of the stream left, so it's up to you guys. I can either start a new asset or I can, oh, I might be able to show you what I've been working on with JT right now. So what would be your preference? For now, I'll get looking into what the next asset is going to be. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I have... Next to Healy Mills, there is some interesting bridges. Which I had an idea on how to set them up. 
because there are these concrete way, uh, massive concrete structures which you can use what's known as a loft. So, I was thinking it might be an idea to do these as a loft because it's just going to be a bit easier at the end of the day. Because then it can be used elsewhere wherever needed. Go through the same process we did last time. So this one's going to go in a special place because it's a loft. It's going to go rather than scenery. Oh, oh, bad. Well, I put that in the wrong place. That needs to be a structures folder. This needs to have a procedural. Folder. Which is going to have a folder called refs. And a folder called textures. These needs to go in here, which sadly also means I'm going to have to re export this because all my file structure is going to be wrong. So that's now moved into here. Gonna need to remake that XML because it's looking for it in somewhere else. There's probably a way to fix it using RW tools, but it's just easier to do it from scratch in my opinion. Unless it was like a super complicated XML. paths are wrong <laughs> so I need to change those strip all paths select missing files textures use path set path unfortunately like most things with train sim if you mess up a little bit, it can cause a massive catastrophic failure. But it's, it's, it's knowing how to fix them is, is, is the tricky bit. And unfortunately my knowledge only goes as far as asset dev. So we've had issues before where 
we've had to research into how to fix things and do tests and all of that. But that seems to be appearing all right now. So I would say that asset's done. Back into game. Does mean I've got to delete it from my assets because I jumped gun. So I'm going to have to go Railworks, Assets, OTS, Leeds Manchester, Scenery, and then delete that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way it's going to stop it from showing up in game. So, where was I? Procedural refs. Uh, I don't know what to call this bridge. Healy Mills Narrow Viaduct. Save changes. Open up new version of 3ds Max because it doesn't clear your palette. First up comes the plane, which is the same dimensions as my image. So, 108 by 192. Now that's the same, I think that's the same. Is it 108 or is it 150? 150, 1050, uh, so. That would have been a mistake, because that would have meant that my image would have been slightly skewed, and I wouldn't have spotted it. So up first, grab my texture. I done. Diffuse bitmap. Default shading top standard. Sure, why that's not working. Could it be? Could it be? Yeah, okay, that's the issue. 
so it's gone into this performance mode where it's not showing me the texture right unfortunately I think I'm gonna have to call it there because I need to look into how to fix this um, oh, thank you for joining me I'm sorry I'm cutting it short um, I'd like to thank everyone in chat who's left so uh, another TV viewer Commander Root Seamus178 Shola May Sirius B Texas Ranger UK and Vi Braters thank you very much for, for watching the stream and I'll be live again Thursday where hopefully this will be sorted uh, thank you all and I hope you have a good night.